I'm just going to see that. I mean, I won't ask you any more questions. If you yeah. just want to keep rolling on that, yeah. that tip. Yeah. Well, what I find about, you know, going forward is that the, there is, the music is there and what people are looking for and thinking about is how to get it across to people. Really, it's getting people to experience it. You know, it's so good to come here and, and listen to the grooves and seeing what their interpretations of it, because I know that's not my intention of it, but I know it all fits and I love that. And so being on a funk tip, because I've been fortunate to work with some great funky acts and having that song and kind of traveled around it's just so nice to hear in abundance and trying to be a part of that because in the club experience now I'm thinking okay this is what I used to do this is what I want to do I have to do it a bit slower now but I'm still really into it you know I'll travel for the music what I love um, and it's always about going to the special places that are doing the music that I love I don't go to just any club anymore like I used to to try and find out what fit I know what I like and I know what fits and that's what I go for whether it's in the UK or whether it's around Europe or further afield you know and that's what's important to me is having that same kind of feel that same kind of passion for the dance floor for hearing the music and sharing it and seeing who's doing it and listening to their interpretation because what we have it's you know part and the pun but it is rare it is so so rare and I think sometimes we take it all for granted what we had but you know we're a lot older now <laughs> we're a lot older now and slowly things are disappearing unless we leave a foundation you know leave a legacy letting people know it did happen people were doing this these are the places we were going to these are the DJs we were playing and half the time we didn't know all we knew was the music was good and who's going to play it next let's follow him you know and that's how I started getting involved and when people started to do less and less of it that I couldn't let it stop and I wanted more so I started doing my own little things but it wasn't really for me uh, it was just to make sure that the music was still there before people People decided that's going to do a better job or there's going to be a better, better festival or or festival that I can go and dance to because at the end of the day I just want to dance to it that's that's where I'm coming from really so Perry uh, you gave us a fantastic sort of feel in general terms what I want you to do now mm. is pick one one moment which sticks out in your memory a particular event a rare groove event um, a particular night that yeah. you went to, the excitement of going to that particular night. Take us through that particular night, who was playing, who, who was you playing. met, what tunes you might have heard, what was inspirational, the feet. Again, paint the picture, paint the picture. but let's, let's try and yeah. go for a particular historical, historical moment that really kind of changed, changed you as a person and changed inspired person. you and got you so fired up on the dance floor, you, yeah. you walked out with a completely like wet t-shirt dripping <laughs> do you can you remember a particular moment or an event or a dj that was exciting yeah there, there was a session um it was quite early on actually well it, it was um the funny period between 79 and 82 when crackers was doing their thing they they stopped doing the friday nights or the friday afternoons and they went to gossips and when they did gossips i think norman J. Paul Trouble Anderson, and there's a couple more that used to be playing, George Powell. And I remember going in there, and um, Little John doesn't remember this, but I went in there for Little John, and he introduced me to Mohammed. And I remember just kind of, it wasn't really busy, but that, that, that that afternoon where you've got the squares in the middle of the floor and you went down and you've got the, D no, the DJ booth was at the back at the time and you walked in and, and I'm chatting away, little John's wearing his um, big chunky vest kind of thing which was the, the, the start of the day, the start of the day and his slippers and um, and then he walked to Mohammed and he was just like, oh yeah, Mohammed was wearing a Chinese jacket and I remember that because I remember two weeks later I went down Carnaby Street and there was a Chinese jacket and I bought one and it was a kind of silk padded one and I got it for something like a fiver because it was on sale it was, I think it was the last one and it fit it fitted me and I remember getting it and just putting it on and thinking yeah I'm Mohammed um, the music then was just <sighs> I wish I remembered what was being played but I knew that in that period because little John was showing me some steps and I was dancing with him and 
the reason I remember it because after that period I went into jazz you know and I remember what it was I went to the jazzy funk it was Jaffers and I remember you had Ronnie L playing upstairs and then you had um, Colin Parnell and Boo in the other room and I remember being in there and then that's when my kind of journey stopped and changed because I was hearing jazz in which I was hearing some connotations but it blew my mind but at that point when I was there at Gossips dancing on a Saturday afternoon um, with little John and Mohammed walking in and I was dancing a little bit and kind of trying to do some things but it wasn't really working because those guys were just were cool and um, that was something that was very very special for me which I never forgot so again from the the dancers point of view yeah. um, and this is where your your experience and your knowledge comes in could you just um, introduce us because you've, you've mentioned little John now yeah could you could you bring these people to life so there are key dancers on the scene that obviously you know, you've mentioned um, yeah. could you bring each one to life just introducing them who they were what their background was maybe what their style was, their style what, was. What, what influenced you what was what was the quirk about their style that um, made you feel feel the music even more and wanted to take you on your journey you wanted to well, those dancers at the time you had little John you had Paul Trouble Anderson which was the guy was just completely in a different class and and I don't mean in the sense that what he was doing um, part of the boogie star but he was really pushing the star which was kind of reminiscent of what we do in, in jazz fusion but you also then you had um, Ian Pappetee's dancing you had which Trevor Shakes of course the stylist um, there was people that I was Stuart Thomas because he at the time I'm thinking about Honda Club days he used to dress all in black almost like a blues brother thing and wearing dark wrap round glasses um, of course Jerry Jerry Barry from IDJ but then he hadn't started IDJ so he was just dancing and, and but he was already getting a, a good name um, the crossover dances kind of Phil Octane who was a, a very much a stylist but his style even though it suited jazz but he was a boogie dancer a kind of funky dancer and those people that I was around that influenced me and of course there's some homegrown dancers that I knew um, Barry, uh, Brian John uh, Scooby Papa Scooby who went onto the radio but he used to go down London we used to follow him down London um, so there was quite a few dancers really that, that had different styles because what was great about this even though you had some basic steps um, a lot of people had their individual styles like Preta Francis who went to be under, become a disco dancer but he was a boogie dancer you know and all those guys that you came across while you was going to different clubs so um, there was some West London dancers, they'll kill me now if I don't mention them, um, that I used to dance with and their style was just such a groove and and it was the groove that epitomised the style, you know, but the others like Treetop used to have a massive um, kind of uh, afro and the style you used to do and spinning one leg up in the air and all those kind of things and and it seemed like everything that came together worked you know like um like uh paul clark um also i'm just thinking of now pinky of course you know all those kind of legendary kind of soul disco dancers and then we started pushing and getting raw because the music kind of um hit us but then suddenly we wanted more we wanted more we wanted edgy we wanted faster we wanted this because we had a lot of energy and that started to push us to a different style but never ever forgot the funk and all the soul or the rare groove and the boogie because that's where we all come from and the whole kind of uk scene has been built on the boogie you know of course you know, up north you had northern soul which was going from 68 to, to 83 you know but the, the boogie and the funk and rare groove was 71 all the way through to 84 and that, that was the kind of development of all the styles coming in because the, the DJs were pushing the sounds and the dancers wanted more and then when you got to a certain point 
it changed, you know. But then you had you had so many different kind of sessions going on. You know, you can go to a decent session every weekend, and that's what I loved about it. And that was kind of with the DJs, and that's formulated with the dancers as well. You want to go and see those dancers. You knew where they're going to be, and then you went there because you wanted to see them dance and hear the music they were dancing to because it was just so cool. So yeah, we're just going to keep on the uh, the dance floor tip. So, yeah. um, some people who are going to be watching the documentary won't know anything about Rare Group. Could you introduce five songs that draw you to the dance floor and take you to another level? And again, introduce the song and explain what it is about either yeah. the rhythm or the artist mm. or something about the groove yeah. that just makes you want to. Yeah let off on the dance floor? It depends again what the interpretation of Rare Groove because you've got kind of um, uh, getting next to you um, I've got it with me as well I can kill myself for that um, Royers obviously people think of Sunshine but when you think are oh, you forced inside your mind those kind of grooves which are quite funky but they've got a groove going into that um, of course the, the, the things that everybody seems to know about the uh, the trend is um, Gwen McRae um, all those kind of things which is a nice nice pulling you in and getting you excited about it but really you know it, I'm going to try and introduce a couple of things t today and see if, if, if people kind of get where, where that is where it's funky and it's solely um, various Edmonds and those kind of things and it's it's that feel you know that that feel and it's it's almost like in fact if you look up here if you've got that kind of sunshine in the track you know that's the best way to describe it you're going out and it might be raining but you're playing this track on your remember it was a cassette then you know in your car and suddenly it, it just felt bright out there and that's what you're walking into and that's what I loved about it so I mean obviously you know you've evolved from the dance floor and now you know you're a, you're a DJ and yeah um, I've heard you down at the jazz club and you know you've got incredible knowledge of the jazz I mean I I really I can't go there because yeah. you guys you know you've got such deep knowledge I wouldn't even know what to drop yeah. but when when the jazz dancers are firing on all, all five cylinders yeah um, give me a couple of tracks which are your sort of uh, I call it ammunition which you would drop at the point <laughs> where you need to take the dance floor just to the absolute edge yeah everyone's fired up and you just want to take it you want to shift gears and give yeah. them the absolute finale I mean if you could introduce like two tracks yeah, for the it, people who are watching the documentary it's it's difficult, it depends on, on, on what floor you are, because remember uh, what I've learned um, as DJ, never one floor is the same. So getting them there, you're building them up and then you might turn it with a, a, a Latin fusion which has got different patterns and rift and in there that's got a groove then it goes off. So, something like um, Batacumbele, which is a Latin funky latin fusion track it starts at one thing it's got that kind of 4-4 four, four rhythm then it changes and then it goes into a latin kind of soul funky break and of course you know if you want to go completely mad you know unspoken tongue um, by dewey redman which is hard and hard kind of it starts with um like uh, chanting it in, in the beginning then it starts coming in with the drums and then it, it's just hard but it depends when you can play that because those two tracks are so different when you hear them you know you couldn't play that on that floor um, that one probably could play it on that one but it depends on, on on kind of the outcome of it and and really with the jazz now especially now I'm coming from making it 
um, even though out now fusion but there's got to be a, a funk and a rare groove kind of tinge and feel to it and that's the difference in, in, in what I'm trying to do and that takes me right back and that's the line that takes me right back from dancing to funk and rare groove to disco to jazz funk to jazz to jazz fusion and Latin you know and that's what it's been very important to me I mean uh, you know, I'm not I'm not a dancer, and yeah. certainly I don't even think with practice I could reach the level that you guys you know mm. reach, especially when you you were at your peak yeah. um, back in the 80s. Yeah. Um, do you think that I mean, personally, my feeling is that the the funk is a kind of universal thing because when I hear a James Brown track, when I hear Rare Groove, mm. even me totally you know a non-dancer it makes me move it picks me up yeah is this why you know you're you're attracted to the rare groove element because it it, it enables you to introduce music to the dance floor that crosses over mm. to people who can't necessarily dance but want to feel the funk interestingly um funk when the funk is a different feel to jazz okay mm -hmm. but you can um, give them uh, an essence of that in the jazz only but you've got to go through the kind of funk and rare groove and the disco and the boogie scene to actually understand what that is because the funk is such a different feel I mean if you're playing a James Brown track you know um, if you're supposing like cold-blooded and how that changes and then you've got that it starts in the funk and it breaks down and it goes up again you know and then um, the feel of that, it, 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 you, you think you understand James Brown, but when you hear that, you don't understand James Brown because he takes you on a different journey. And that's what was good. He, he would say, yeah, it, the one, which is a two, really, but it's got that groove that holds you there, holds you in there. And that's your starting point, which everyone should be able to pick that up. But then you can start to move around with that, move your legs and that, get in the groove and moving. And then you can change in how you want to interpret that groove. But everybody is on a, uh, on a groove, but once everybody's doing a mass, it's beautiful. On the jazz, you've got the, the, the steady ones, you've got the ones that the people might play a 7-4, like um, Ayeto's Tombow 7-4, which is seven beats to the bar, which is strange. But if you try and dance to it, it it's, you know, if you try and do a straight groove, it's not there, but it's got its own kind of feel. So you, you kind of learn and you work with what, what your boundaries are and then you start to home it in so that you think okay I want to go into that direction but I want to bring back to that direction which is quite funky you know because you're trying to keep a steady groove but in jazz you can find that and that's what you learn to do or you just play as some people say I'm going to play the fastest jazz record the most obscure that doesn't make it a good jazz record it doesn't make it a good thing to dance to it just means that this is what I'm going to bring to the party you know but to have a, a balance that that links with the dance you've got to answer dance you've got to understand the dance floor and the dancers so that you can take them on a the journey if you don't understand them then you can't totally play for them and this is what makes it unique that the people who have been able to do that um, who are the pioneers of that they were incredible because some of them weren't dancers so how did they come across and put this thing to, to get us all dancing in the first place? So we're just kind of following the, what they put out for us and trying to make sure that there's something there that you know other people can enjoy. Because we all know this music is just brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. There's nothing that you can say comes close to that. Yes, people say they have their trends and this and this, but what people don't realise, all those trends have come from this. You know, it's just a development of what what was started and this what started all for us and we still love it you know don't mind everyone goes in there but listen to this as well because you'd be surprised how many of these things that you're hearing is in there and that's where it came from and that's what we're trying that's what I love about it and that's why I'm sticking with it because look I love music as simple as that you know but what I do love is representing the stuff that we really want to feature with and this is totally totally underrepresented and we've just got to do our part to get it out there to show people this music listen to this don't have to say much just listen to this 
that's all you have to do or come here this is going on just come and see the like-minded people are coming together that's like wow oh wow you know and that's what being a part of this journey is just beautiful for me such a such a lovely sentiment this is the untold story of rare groove so yeah. what i'd love you to do is tell something and i keep asking people it's like a nugget of information mm. uh, that's never been told before yeah um something that will be of interest to the history of rare groove the untold story yeah. have you got something that you'd be <laughs> able to share with us i'm not sure if i've got anything to that 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 i feel might be relevant but i remember um a few years ago, I was DJing in Washington, D.C. I, I played in a place called um, the 18th Street Lounge. And I remember a friend of mine who is um, a good friend with Leroy Hudson. And also, um, he knew the guys from Ramp and he called, he called them up and I went to uh, I went uh, to their house and I sat down and having dinner and he was chatting about music and he was gonna come and hear me DJ in this in this in this club which was quite quite funny because it made the Washington news they were saying this English guy is gonna come to Washington DC and play funk you know this and I was like oh here we go and I remember oh, John Emmanuel and he said oh yeah I'm gonna make a phone call but I'm just checking to see um, if she's available and and who, what you're talking about is trying to get Erica Badu and John to come to the session and I'm like thinking hang on this is about right this has really gone out of my league now and I'm thinking okay right whatever I do I've just got to make it funky and that's all I knew and uh, he didn't she couldn't make it because she was in the studio but he he called me the next day and he said like can't do it but we're in touch now and I know he's coming over with his band ramp so and that was beautiful to have that kind of funk and rare groove kind of thing coming close to you know coming up to me and thinking right you're you're doing this and you're doing this in the states and you know for me that was one of those personal moments that yeah because i've i think i've done a few like that but i've never really aired them because i feel like i'm a, I'm a part of many people trying to showcase the music and enjoy it so my story is part of many so that was my story so we um, we touched on it before. Yeah. Um, I want you to again. It's, it's bringing it to life. Mm. Uh, a moment in your DJ career where you've put on a track. Yeah. You know it's a good track. You, you've always loved it, but it's done something unique at that moment in time. Ooh. I call it. Yeah. I call it the alignment of magical vibrations. It's when you've got um, you've got the, the crowd, <laughs> okay. you've got the music, you've got the sound system, yeah. and at that very moment, everything just comes together. It's like an alignment that brings together certain universal forces yeah. that are unique at that moment, and that energy is unleashed. So, okay. could you tell wow. us about a track that you might have dropped? Uh, a club moment yeah there, there is a moment but it's it's almost close to what you're asking but again another personal moment i remember i was um a support dj and i was playing at the forum and i was playing um licking stick by james brown and um i you know it it, it, it was a moment where the crowd really reacted and people were literally screaming when I was playing it and just as the kind of track was halfway through James Brown came walking across the stage and he came up he shook my hand and then he about kind of just little nod then he walked off his entourage and I was just like this and the crowd was just screaming that was the perfect moment for me <laughs> amazing so you you actually met James Brown yes yeah. dance room and DJ for him. oh wow can yeah. you talk about dancing for I mean obviously James Brown is one of the big inspirations in terms of yeah you know the, the funk style and the boogie style yeah 
Um, I mean, at one at one point, it'd be really nice to tonight's not the opportunity, but yeah. maybe you know for you to demonstrate some of the basic steps. Um, yeah. But I'd love you to again. I mean, bring bring to life your meeting with James Brown and working with him. We were very very fortunate. Um, I had a promotion at the Jazz Cafe called Messing Around. And at messing around, working with the promoter, which was Aidan Gibson at the time, we uh, were bringing funk bands and bringing to life a lot of the groups that that epitomised the sound. You know, Fatback Band. Um, talking about the early things that John Lewison did, um, Jose Feliciano, what he did in Golden Lady, and um, we had an opportunity that. You know, he said, uh, Perry, I've got, uh, I've got a mad one. What are you doing such and such? He goes, oh, I don't know. He said, well, how would you like to support James Brown? Of course, I've dropped the phone. You know, I said, uh, uh, yeah, 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 you know, words that effect. And he goes, no, it's true. It's going to happen. Are you up for it? And I said, wow, yes. So, um, I remember before we did, we had to go into these rehearsals. And I remember that they're on stage. We, you know, he's rehearsing his band and we're walking through the aisle and I'm just seeing James Brown rehearsing, you know, get telling the band, no, do it like this, do it like this, do it like that. And I just stood there and watched this. And then afterwards, we had to go and do a rehearsal number that we was going to do for him. And I remember we did the, uh, we started working on the piece. There was five of us dancing and we kind of tried to do us funky and do it. And um, they had a screen in, in the dressing room, just in the, the, the green area. Um, so we're rehearsing at the front, and then we're going through, we get it down, and came back out, and was down, and half his band there, and the colonel was there, and he's saying, man, you keeping this thing funky? I says, yep, it's all about the funk for us, it's all about the groove. And he says, man, it's good to see young people taking that forward. And, and I was just thinking, Wow, and so I went and sat down and I'm just looking, you know, to my left, there's the Colonel there, looking to my right, there's James Brown there chatting, and I'm like, it doesn't get any better than that. And I remember after the show, and he was really nice, I mean, he you know, shook his hands and said, well, I called him Mr. Brown, you know, as you do, and said, thank you for the opportunity, and I can't wait to just to be a part of this. And just kind of remember just kind of when we did the show, because we had to come back the next day, we, I walked out. Again, it was that thing. I, I, I'm not quite sure how I got back home, to be honest. I kind of glided back and then glided back the next day. And then when we did the rehearsals again, this time, except for, uh, for Mr. Brown, the whole band was watching us do our, our rehearsal. And then we had this thing where we was talking to the whole band and they were excited about there was these people who were dancing to funk and pushing things forward and we were just there thinking they're talking to us what what and it was just one of those those incredible experiences so this is interesting james brown you met james brown so you've got that connection to james brown and yeah if we take it one step further we're going to you know be custodians and passing the music down to the next yeah. generation um this is the this is kind of a, a platform for really you know us the custodians who have lived the music and especially you you've been on the dance floor all the way through the scene yeah can you give a word to the next generation about you know what this music's about uh, how you define the music and what is special about this music for you and why you think the legacy should should um, live on the, the, there's, there's two things that, that you touched on you do it um because you're into the music and also you're doing it as a dance. As a dance, we, we should set the foundation to make sure that people know this dance existed that went to the music. Because a lot of people are thinking about dance and they're pushing the dance forward, but don't know where it's coming from. We're so lucky we were there when it was evolving, you know, um, from being from one thing to the other, to making it funky, doing spins, doing the splits, doing everything. And we were there when it started to change, you know, because in the UK scene, um, we've had pioneers that helped to develop the music. So as, um, you know, leaving a legacy, we 
owe it to ourselves to leave that because we are a lot older and what we experience through the dance just through the dance is incredible enough in music wise I mean we've, we've had some great musicians some great funk and artists that that we know who have played funk groove soul jazz funk um, so a lot of those guys are still around and doing kind of a revival thing but what we should do is get together and create a specialised event to celebrate that because this is what we've got. We've got the British side, we've got the American side, 